What up? It's your boy NWP, but you can call me Pwn, and today we're going to make a new video in a new way that, uh, you know, goes along with the new season. So a lot of new stuff going on here, and hopefully you're enjoying season 13 with the Beast Incarnate itself that has returned. The Spitfire just has to be one of the most destructive things to ever grace the arena in itself. But today we're going to be taking a look at how you can easily control recoil on Apex Legends if you're a controller player. And this is an easy, very, very easy trick that anyone will be able to apply with a little bit of effort. And I mean a very little bit of effort. It's going to take literally just more of you remembering to do it than actually trying very hard. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is something that maybe a lot of newer players don't know about apex legends and this will probably help you right off the bat understanding the recoil of the weapons and before we get too far along i guess i should state some glaring inconsistencies that i will have with your may well technically you might be able to do this too it's all, it all depends but i have a severely modified controller with hair triggers as well as paddles on the back and as you can see my logo on there as well aim controllers check them out if you haven't use cone pwn hub at checkout if you'd like to get a hold of a controller but i just wanted to get that out of the way so that you do know that there are some changes to my controller and some of them are very very different than what uh, you might have in terms of my joysticks i actually have my joysticks changed by myself to be a little bit stiffer more similar to xbox 360 controllers and uh, that's just for my personal preference but also the right stick is taller than my left stick and the reason that we have the taller stick on the right is that it makes smaller motions easier to do in game because you can make a bigger motion but the in-game reaction will be an actual smaller motion so it's a much less linear uh, movement of the actual fulcrum point so great option if you haven't uh, taken advantage of it obviously not everyone can take advantage of having an increased stick height just simply because maybe your hands are uncomfortable maybe your hands aren't big enough to really use it properly etc so that's understandable but everything that we're going to talk about from this point forward can be done by anyone with any standard controller and the first thing that we need to talk about is recoil patterns and i'm just going to aim down sights i'm not even going to touch these sticks at all and i'm just going to pull the trigger and let the gun do what it wants to do entirely and the spitfire is probably the best option for this simply because when i go over here and i do it again you'll realize that it's almost an identical pattern side by side those are very, very similar, and if I go back over here and do it again, you'll see that the pattern continues to be very, very similar to the point where these last two are nearly identical, okay? So recoil patterns for PC players with a mouse and keyboard is very, very easy and a common thing to learn, especially if they're familiar with CSGO. So if you've played Counter-Strike, it's something you might be very familiar with. However, if you're a COD player, you might not be familiar with this if you're coming from console. And a lot of other games will use actual random recoil functions compared to Apex Legends. But this is every weapon in the game that's fully automatic. Um, I do think there is a pattern if you spam fire other weapons, but I don't know what they are off the top of my head and i usually just try to aim at the target and shoot when i'm aiming at them with single shot weapons so it doesn't really function the same way and this trick probably won't work for those weapons anyways but basically you're going to want to know two real tricks to controlling recoil on controller and the first trick is timing your pulling down so that if you're pulling down you're going to just get horizontal recoil so it's going to go left and right and that cluster alone is enough for a lot of people to get better now because i have hair triggers when i'm pulling my joystick down and pulling my trigger it's 
almost identically in sync and it's very easy to control. So it becomes much less of a task to uh, get the muscle memory down for the weapon. However, there is a caveat to that because there are weapons like the Havoc when it doesn't have the turbocharger on it that can throw you off if you don't know the timing between trigger pull and the actual fire of the first shot. So there's actually a side trick that we'll talk about towards the end of the video for those weapons in particular that is actually a little bit interesting. But as you can see, that cluster is actually pretty good. But if we add in the next trick, which is just a shimmy left and right like that, you'll see we start to get a much more grouped centralized pattern. And this little shimmy like this, if you can maximize it when you're in game, really doesn't look like you're moving. Uh, the Spitfire is probably the best example for this right here. It really doesn't look like I'm doing it. And... At some points when I stop, you can see it going over there, but the initial right here pattern is just all right here clustered in. And that's what really what you want to do. Now, there is also a reason that I'm using these scopes on these weapons, okay? So understanding your aim assist range is the other real big situation because aim assist right here, I don't even have to do anything. I wasn't even touching the joysticks right there. Like, there was nothing for me to do in that situation. Okay, so, like, right here, target not moving. I can just hold the trigger down and do nothing. Really easy. We get this far away, and we try to do that. It's not going to work again. So, okay. However, when we try to control it and do the little trick I said, it becomes so much easier that we hit center mass just by strafing left and right. And essentially what's happening, happening is when you do these little micro strafes, you're adjusting for those recoil patterns in the exact same way that jitter aiming does work. Now, using a longer sight does give you a little bit more duration of where you'll be able to actually use your aim assist effectively. So keep that in mind. That's why the two different scopes specifically but the main thing is that i've got this little tip here that i call jitter strafing and jitter strafing allows you to compensate for the jitters in the weapon and use them to your net advantage allowing your right stick to only be used to aim at your target and your left stick when stabilized to be used like this so that you're actually just fighting the recoil now it is a little bit different to be able to get moving and actually strafe in a gunfight and using things like crouching will also net you more you know, effective general generally speaking will affect you more overall kills but we're going to show you a little trick here with the havoc and the havoc is even for me really really hard as you can see i pulled down way too hard because i don't know when it's going to fire but at this range, it's really easy to control. However, if we get a few feet back, this one's hard to control. However, there's this little trick that I like is that you actually, let me, let me kill him real quick. This little trick that I like to do is that you start shooting here before you ADS. And then once those first shots come out, then you ADS. And it becomes so much easier to do things like and just nuke these characters by using the weapons effectively to how they are efficient to be used. So hopefully you guys will be able to utilize some of these tricks and tips that I've dropped in this video to your advantage. And maybe you'll be even better than I am because let me tell you right now, I am not at all anything better than mediocre. I am just a YouTuber using the best plays that I get over a course of an entire season to make videos for you talking about upcoming content while trying to also keep entertaining gameplay that is meaningful to the season in the background. But today we went over some tips and tricks that I use and I know for a fact that other people have used because this was something I actually got from a pro during season three and I can't remember who it was, but they had a video on Twitter and I was like, I'm going to try that. And ever since that point, I've been able to win more gunfights more efficiently and more accurately. So I think it's a great tip and I really think you need to try it out. So 
hop in game and then let me know in the comment section down below if this has helped you out any obviously it's not going to be something that you remember to do every single time but if you force yourself to do it and try to force yourself to remember it it will be something that absolutely improves your gameplay overall and if you guys would like to show me any other tips that you have or many trips that you have about the game to get even better then drop a comment down below and let me know what you got for me as well and don't forget to head on over to the social media links they'll be displayed on the screen as well as in the description down below give them a like a favor to follow and definitely let me know any tips or tricks that you may have for apex legends because i would definitely be interested in learning for the future anything that would make me a better player especially if it'll do it quite easily but guys, that about wraps it up for today's video. We don't have too much more to talk about. I'll keep you informed about the upcoming leaks and news about the season. But here's another video you can check out if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And don't forget, you won't be able to control recoil or not control recoil if you don't stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, have a good one.